Skeptics often ask why contemporary historians fail to mention Jesus. The typical Christian reply is we have several who do describe Jesus, notably including the first century Jewish historian Josephus. Here's where hardcore skeptics will say, fake news. Josephus never really mentions Jesus, and of the two passages about Jesus found in Josephus, one is fake and the other isn't referring to Jesus at all. I gotta say, I find this reply to be a little bit odd. Even very skeptical critics of Christianity like Bart Ehrman believe that Josephus refers to Jesus. So where are these Jesus myths? getting this stuff. Before we dig into their arguments, let's back up a little bit. Who exactly is Josephus? Well, we know he was born into a wealthy Jewish family around 37 AD. He was a general in the Jewish army, but ended up defecting to the Roman side during the Jewish war. Josephus served the Roman emperors Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian. He wrote extensive histories, including the Jewish war and Jewish antiquities. His works are a historical treasure trove that give us a ton of context into the times of Jesus. So what did Josephus Josephus allegedly write about Jesus. Here is the famous Testimonium Flavianum, and it reads, About this time lived Jesus, a wise man, if indeed one ought to call him a man. For he was one who performed surprising deeds, and was a teacher of such people as accept the truth gladly. He won over many Jews and many of the Greeks. He was the Messiah. And when upon the accusation of the principal men among us, Pilate had him condemned to a cross, those who first came to love him did not cease. He appeared to them, spending a third day restored to life, for the prophets of God had foretold told these things and a thousand other marvels about him. And the tribe of Christians so called after him has still to this day not disappeared. Now the quotes in red are what scholars would say are doctored by later Christian scribes and you can see why. Josephus was devoutly Jewish and no real Jew would have said these things about Jesus. So what do scholars think the passage actually said? Well, rather than throwing the baby out with the bathwater, most historians believe that the passage is genuine, just touched up. It's a bit like finding a mustache on the copy of a Mona Lisa. Interestingly, there is a 10th century Arabic manuscript cited by Shlomo Pines of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem back in 1972. Here's how it reads. At this time, there was a wise man who was called Jesus, and his conduct was good, and he was known to be virtuous, and many people from among the Jews and other nations became his disciples. Pilate condemned him to be crucified and to die, and those who had become his disciples did not abandon his discipleship. They reported that he had appeared to them three days after his crucifixion and that he was alive. Accordingly, he was perhaps the Messiah concerning whom the prophets have recounted wonders. So as you can see, this passage is much more neutral, but it still tells us a lot about Jesus. Most historians believe that this version is likely closer to the original text of Josephus, and even the skeptical New Testament scholar Bart Ehrman says, the majority of scholars of early Judaism and experts on Josephus think that one or more Christian scribes touched up the passage a bit. So, problem solved, right? Well, not quite. Still, some claim the passage is a total fabrication. Why is that? There are five main arguments raised by the fringe scholars who don't think Jesus ever existed. Number one, if you remove the testimonium from its larger context, the previous paragraph flows together. This section seems conspicuously out of place. The problem with this argument is that it isn't rare for ancient writers to digress, and other digressions are in fact found in the context of the passage. Footnotes as we know them are more of a modern thing. Furthermore, in this section of Josephus, it does emphasize Pilate's rule. It's totally understandable why Josephus would give us an incidental comment about Jesus since Pilate had him crucified. Number two, no one mentions this passage until the fourth century. Why didn't early Christian apologists like Justin Martyr or Tertullian or Origen make use of this passage. Also, Origen even names Josephus, but he never even comments on this section. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but this is an argument from silence, and that just won't do. General U.S. Grant wrote a ton about the Civil War, but he never mentioned the Emancipation Proclamation. Arguments from silence are notoriously sketchy. Also, what would Christian apologists use this passage to prove? That Jesus was wise, or he did great deeds? That he had a big following? Few in the ancient world would have denied this or really even cared. Furthermore, the non-touched up version may reflect that Josephus was shocked that Jesus still had followers despite his crucifixion. We know that Origen didn't think that Josephus believed in Jesus, and Jerome mentions the testimonium, but he never even uses it. Even though he cites Josephus almost a hundred times elsewhere, he just didn't see any apologetic value in it. Number three, Josephus said a lot of negative things about other messianic pretenders. Why was he not harsh with Jesus? Well, we know that Jesus never really led a rebellion against Rome, as with other failed messiahs. Josephus says that he's a teacher crucified on unknown charges. There just aren't many harsh things to say other than him being killed shows that he wasn't all that successful. We already knew that Jesus wasn't a political messiah. Number four, Josephus wouldn't have called him wise or someone who taught the truth. I think the answer here is that we're just not sure how familiar 
familiar Josephus was with Jesus' teaching. Jesus taught many things that weren't unwise or untruthful, like taking care of the poor, helping the needy, loving God. Maybe what little Josephus knew of Jesus' teaching wasn't really all that offensive to him. Number five, Josephus wouldn't have called him the Christ. He calls no other messianic pretenders by this title. This complaint refers to the famous James passage, which most scholars believe refers to James, the brother of Jesus. Let's take a look at it. It reads, But this younger Ananus, who, as we told you already, took the high priesthood, was a bold man in his temper and very insolent. He assembled the Sanhedrin of judges and brought before them the brother of Jesus, the so-called Christ, whose name was James, and some others. When he formed an accusation against them as breakers of the law, he delivered them over to be stoned. So why would Josephus call Jesus the Christ? Probably because Josephus mentions 20 other Jesuses in his writings, as it was a pretty common name. The passage calls for some disambiguation, and Josephus gives it to us. Also, Origen does use this passage. He probably wouldn't have cited it if he wasn't sure his critical audience couldn't have found it themselves. Also, the traditional accounts of James' death differ significantly from Josephus' account. Eusebius, Hegesippus, and Clement say scribes and Pharisees threw him down from the temple battlement. People stoned him after he fell, but a priest came and stopped them. Then he was finally clubbed to death by laundrymen. Josephus tells us that he was stoned to death by Ananus, and that's it. A Christian interpolator probably wouldn't have given us a seemingly contradictory account, or they would have at least fleshed it out a little bit more. So, what does Josephus tell us about the historical Jesus? Josephus confirms some basic facts we read in the New Testament. We learn that Jesus had a reputation for being a good man, he had many followers, Pilate had him crucified, his followers believed to have seen him after he died, and they thought he was the Messiah. We also learn that Jesus had a brother named James who was killed decades after Jesus. Certain things follow from Jesus' brother James becoming a leader in the early church and dying for this messianic movement. For starters, Paul thought that Jesus was from the line of David. James would have been able to squash that rumor if it wasn't a fact, but Paul instead tells us that James confirmed his message. Also, there's the whole story of Jesus being born a virgin in Bethlehem. According to Paul, James was a pillar in the church, and his other brothers traveled abroad, spreading the gospel. So, a lot would have been known already about Jesus' family in the early church. If Matthew and Luke were inventing novel beliefs, they probably would have been met with great resistance. They also would have had to travel widely to displace the old position with the new. So, this Jewish historical source confirms a lot of what we know from the New Testament. Testament. Recognizing some regrettably dishonest Christian edits doesn't take away from the core historicity. Fairly examined, I think this text removes all doubt that Jesus actually existed.